Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty thorough stuff to go over, and it's all going to be related to Ethereum and the different fragments that have come off of that. And lastly, we're going to finish up with Polkadot. So this really comes down to this little image that I had found on the internet, and it talks about the PayPal Mafia and how I'm going to compare that to the Ethereum Mafia. Not that these guys are mafiosos or whatnot, but uh, if you take a look at the comparisons, we're going to go over uh, just what these guys have done as time has moved forward into and how it relates to Ethereum. So if you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I like teams and uh, I got to tell you, these teams are stacked. But before we do that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is August 26th. It's around 11 a.m. Texas time. Getting things done early. Thank God for once. And uh, let's see what's happening in the market. So Bitcoin, eh, not too bad. Actually, it's right below 11.5, so I'm pretty happy about that. It hasn't fallen below 11,000, which is what I was worried about, but here we are. Ethereum uh, did drop below 400 mark, but uh, hey, what are you going to do? Hopefully, it can go up a little bit more, and I see big things on the horizon. Tether is Tether. Nobody cares. XRP, the other stable coin in the top five, <laughs> is roughly at 27 cents, so XRP not doing much. Watch out. Chainlink, um, actually up 10.5%. That's pretty good. Uh, actually, we've seen a lot of volatility here with Chainlink, and uh, I can understand why. But, uh, you know, I was worried it might go down a little bit more. But for what it does, uh, as far as an Oracle, I see also I see big things on the horizon. So I am uh, I'm hopeful that Chainlink can hit up to that $16, $17 mark. But, you know, who knows? And then uh, the darling of the industry right now, Polkadot. We're going to get into this uh, bigly later because it has had a massive run. It is already, and it could uh, be in the top five. As you can take a look at here, as far as the market cap, uh, 5.77 billion compared to 5.84 billion. So it's conceivable that this could be flipped and we could see Polkadot, which barely has a seven day average of 116%, could be in the top five where I have never seen that happen before. So amazing. Uh, Litecoin, Cardano, hey, Cardano up six, uh, seven percent, which leads me to something I need to talk about in a little bit. Bitcoin SV, no idea what's in the top 10, but hey, there it is. Binance Coin, Tezos, uh, Tron, doing pretty good. Cosmos down a little bit, but man, what a massive run. I do not own any Cosmos, but tip of the hat to all you Cosmos owners because you guys really uh, kept with it, and here we are. And then Neo at 7.6. I used to own Neo back in the day. Don't anymore. All right, so that's it. Uh, let's uh, go on to today's top story. But before we do that, let's take a look at uh, all the things that I messed up on <laughs> as far as corrections. So there was a video I did a couple of days ago which talked about China and Russia dumbing the dollar. Now that part is totally true. That is definitely going on. And uh, we just saw... Uh, another press release where Russia is encouraging other countries to totally dump the U.S. dollar. So that will only increase. And then it talks about gold and Bitcoin. I dominate, still believe that. But there was a story that I talked about here, which I said Cardano fails to hit timeline. And in there, what I talked about was the timeline of the Daedalus wallet. So the Daedalus wallet was supposed to come out uh, version 2.2. And I, when I looked at that for that day, it was still on 2.1, uh, which was, was the old version. So I assumed that it had not come in. However, there's a little button here called Flight. And on Flight, these are specially created uh, wallets for ADA holders who want to help us test new Daedalus wallet features. So this is where you find all the latest and greatest stuff. I had no idea. So that's one of those things where I was uh, incorrect. What can you do? And uh, a lot of people in the comment section had told me, well, not a lot, but a couple people were aware of it. And I said, oh, great. And I just didn't really think about it. However, last night I was watching my man Charles Hoskinson do a little uh, live stream. Always entertaining this guy. And uh, this is what he says. So I'm just going to have you take a listen. Hi, everybody. Charles Hoskinson live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny, sometimes Colorado. Real quick video, uh, talk a bit about uh, flight versus mainnet. So the paint chip brigade, uh, the people on the internet who like criticizing us with unfounded statements, uh, they've been running around Twitter and YouTube and Reddit and other places saying that we're missing deadlines. And of course, the it's because we're now doing ETC related stuff. Um, now, what these idiots don't understand or they do understand they're just being vile people, is that we didn't miss any deadlines. <laughs> and I, I can't even understand where they're coming from. I guess they don't know that there's actually two versions of the Daedalus wallet. So 
And that's exactly it. <laughs> so that's exactly what it comes down to. No idea. So I want to say thanks to everybody who had uh, enlightened me. So thanks so much. And, uh, you know, we don't always get it right, but uh, we try to correct. All right, let's move on. So there's this great article, and it talked about who are Ethereum's co-founders and where are they now. I'm a big believer in history. Uh, if you want to look at where you're going, you have to look at where you've been. And I'm also a big believer in teams and partnerships, and it's all about who you know, not what you know. And uh, this was a it was a really good uh, read. It was from the author uh, Camilla Russo, who also wrote the book The Infinite Machine. I just purchased that on Amazon, so waiting uh, 48 hours that to deliver right to my doorstep. Gotta love Amazon, right? So what she talked about here was just uh, the a gentleman who had been founders or co-founders of Ethereum, and how it all related to them and how they got into it. And I started to remember this. There was a uh, an image I'd seen a long time ago, which talked about the PayPal model. Mafia. And the PayPal Mafia is all the people that had created PayPal back in the day and who had branched out and what they had actually all become. And you can see everything from uh, Karim Chen and Hurley who created YouTube. I mean, afterwards, they were all co-founders. So they made this massive PayPal and they went onto YouTube and that did okay. Uh, then you've got, uh, you know, Stoppelman for Yelp. You got uh, Reed Hoffman for LinkedIn. This guy, Elon Musk, I've heard of him somewhere. He does something with uh, some cars and some SpaceX stuff. You got uh, Rabawai who made uh, Square or the CEO of Square. David Sachs, Shaw, Levchin, Jeannie, Kiva, and Slide. I, first of all, I had no idea what those were. So I'd actually take a look at what they are. So Jeannie, it's a commercial genealogy and social networking website. It was acquired by MyHeritage in 2012, and it's got more than 140 million profiles. And I'm sure when they sold it, uh, it was uh, for billions, just a guess. And I took a look at Kiva. Kiva is a, it's a nonprofit organization. And this one was really cool. Nonprofit organization that allows people to lend money via the internet to low-income entrepreneurs and students in 77 countries. And we've done these types of things, me and my wife, for microloans in sub-Saharan Africa. I don't know if it was for Kiva or through another one, but uh, it's a you know fantastic organization, so that's pretty cool. And then Slide was supposed to be a, another social network, uh, which was acquired by uh, Google, and they acquired uh, uh, Slide for a nice $200 million. So, hey, good for that guy. And then we go on to Simmons uh, for, for Yelp again, uh, Botha, Sequoia, Kiva, and then uh, this little known gentleman right here, Peter Thiel, um, you know, does a little bit of a thing, multi-billionaire, and uh, has got it right on a lot of different things, and has also invested heavily into Layer 1, which is a Bitcoin mining operation in West Texas, among other things. So if you take a look at this team, pretty great team, and they actually had a monstrous success in the beginning, and then it led to monstrous success after their first one. So uh, these are the types of things that I'm looking for as far as teams and what they do. And it started to click to me after I read this article, uh, which was talking about all the different uh, co-founders of Ethereum and what had happened later on. And I just made this, this quick graphical representation because it helps to keep everything clear. Uh, so you had eight people. Uh, Vitalik, I think we all know that guy, working on Ethereum 2.0 right now. We'll see what that does. I think it's going to do well. Uh, and then you have uh, my high Elise, and I will just tell you right now, I will butcher everybody's name, sorry. But uh, he did Akasha, and Akasha I had to take a look at, which looks like a pretty cool thing. It's a nonprofit. Um, they do blockchain, collective intelligence. So something about expansion of, of minds, local, regional, and global scales, uh, something about firing. Uh, it, it just looks like a pretty cool, different little project. So I'm like, okay. Now you have to remember, these guys in the PayPal Mafia, I mean, they had done this a long time ago. And then they had actually gone into these other businesses and really built them up. I mean, YouTube's been around since, uh, what, 05? So we're looking at 15 years. And then PayPal, I think, was in 98 or 99, somewhere around there. So they had time to actually go from one fantastic project to another fantastic project. I think the same thing is happening here with these gentlemen uh, right here for Ethereum. So you got that. Uh, Anthony D. DeLorio, he created the Jack's Wall. Don't haven't used that one yet. Might actually uh, check it out. Amir Chedrit, he's kind of like an advisor for a lot of different things, but uh, he keeps a low profile. Charles Hoskinson, Hoskinson. And bam, just like magic, it's fixed. Charles Hoskinson, I think we all know this guy, founder, CEO of Cardano and IOHK. See how that all works out. Big believer, but uh, who knows? The guy did essentially call me an idiot. I would say ignorant, but uh, what are you going to do? And then uh, Dr. Gavin Wood, founder of Polkadot and Web3. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, Jeffrey Wilkie, he 
moved on from Ethereum and is looking to start up a, a gaming company called Grid Games. And from what I've seen so far, this is from a Medium post, they look pretty awesome. So again, we'll see how that'll works out by given time. And then uh, this gentleman here, Joseph Lubin, which I did, I had no idea this guy was a, he was a Princeton grad and uh, he was uh, one of the deep pockets that got, that got involved. And now he is the founder of Consensus. If you know what Consensus is, it's for dApps. It's a market leading blockchain technology company, but he also has his hands on a lot of different things as far as instrumental in recruiting uh, partners such as uh, JP Morgan, CME Group, Mellon, Credit Suisse, uh, Banco Santander, UBS, and Microsoft. So uh, that guy sounds like the linchpin almost. So if you take a look at that as a whole, this is a pretty good team. Now, of course, in this article that Camilla Russo wrote, uh, there are varying degrees of who contributed more and who contributed less to Ethereum. I am not going to get into that part, but when we're looking at teams or as far as individuals who may have played a big factor, I'm taking a square look at Wood because this polka dot seems to be, or maybe could be potentially enormous. First of all, I'd have Gavin tell you exactly what Polkadot is and how it all works uh, by watching this two minute or three minute video. But uh, this is a guy that I can just tell has an extreme amount of intelligence because when you listen to it, I will link it in the description. Uh, you guys can check this out. But uh, even that, uh, his basic explanation went over my head. Some things are hard for me to understand, I suppose. So I try to break it down in the simplest terms possible. So first up, Gavin is part of the, or is the founder of the Web3 Foundation. Mission is to nurture cutting edge applications for decentralized or DAP software protocol. Uh, they're trying to deliver uh, Web 3.0, decentralized and fair internet, where users control their data. That'd be nice. I identity and destiny. Well, that's a good one. And uh, Polkadot is our flagship project. So we're looking over here. So not only does he have a foundation here, but he's also working towards Polkadot. So to take a look at what it is, Polkadot and really Web3 will enable a completely decentralized web where users are in control. And I think this is what is going to happen later on as far as domains. That's why I'm, I'm always talking about unstoppable domains. If you need to get, pick up a, a domain that ends in .crypto or .zillica before all the big companies get to it, look in the description. There's a link right there and pick something up. Remember back in the 90s, people were picking up like pets.com and gold.com and whatever else.com. Well, those are all gone. So just look for .crypto and .zill, probably be better off. So when you buy your blockchain domain, great news for you, uh, you're gonna get 30% off just for using your crypto.com pay wallet. So if you're looking for a link, it'll be in the description. It'll look something like this. Just click on that and that's it. Anyhow, Polkadot is built to connect private and consortium chains, public and permissionless networks. I wanna read that again, public and permissionless networks, oracles, and future technologies that have yet to be created. Polkadot facilitates an internet where independent blockchains can exchange information and transaction in a trustless way via the Polkadot relay chain. So independent blockchains can exchange information. They can work together, interoperability, that sounds pretty good. But going deeper, we gotta take a look at what that all means, because it's all gobbledygook until you really you know, break down and see what it's all about. So there is one, two, three, four, five sections, and they break it down, scale, specialize, working together, self-govern, and uh, upgrade. So to, to start it all off, scale, blockchains in isolation, can only process a limited amount. Polkadot is a multi-chain network, meaning it can process many transactions on several chains in parallel. So it's sharded multi-chain network and among all those shards, so what that means when you're able to uh, process these different shards, these different uh, networks, these different blockchains, that is a problem right now facing what they call legacy networks where they process tractions, transactions one by one by one by one. And it makes sense, right? I mean, we know, let's just call a spade a spade. Let's just say Bitcoin. Yeah, that's exactly how things are done. And that's why they're trying to change different things, the lightning network and side chains and su such. But I got to tell you, it's still slow. And when people really get into uh, Bitcoin, uh, if it happens like 2017, we're gonna see enormous fees and enormous slowdown. And people will be like, what, this is the future? Get out of here. I'll go back to Wells Fargo. Well, I won't be that crazy. Anyhow, specialties. When it comes to blockchain architecture, one size doesn't fit all. Op all blockchains make trade-offs to support different features. One chain might optimize for identity management. 
Another mind optimized for file storage. On Polkadot, each blockchain can have a novel design optimized for a specific use case. So that's pretty amazing right there. So what they're saying is it's not just one blockchain that does one thing. They're saying this blockchain can do everything, just about. And what, what got to me is when it said permissioned, permission network. So I started to think about it. We talked yesterday about starbucks and then using blockchain technology that's being offered through microsoft uh, so if you go through microsoft not just microsoft but if you look at ibm they have permission networks it means it is closed you you know you have to have specific access it is very centralized so they're saying hey it doesn't matter if you are permission permission list open or closed doesn't matter we can help you get to the next level so i think that is a huge factor very nice Next up, it says work together. They can share information. And how do they do that? Well, here's the example. A chain providing financial services can communicate with another that provides access to real-world data, like an oracle. So you can have something like DeFi, and then you have Chainlink, and you can make them work better together and share that information. Uh, and and they, they talk about oracles you know, doing things like outside data, such as stock market price feeds for tokenized equities. And remember, oracles uh, blockchains are kind of stuck in their own little world right you need an oracle to pull out a outside data because if not blockchains can't do it but what they're saying is hey we can help them do it even better by using polka dot all right great self-govern and this is all about staking so polka dot you will be able to stake it at some point teams can customize and optimize their blockchains governance their needs and this was the coolest thing blockchain governance models can even be perfected and upgraded as needs and conditions change over time so everything has to evolve as time moves on so if you have some type of blockchain or some type of service or some type of uh, organization uh, or project that is saying you know what here's what we're going to do we're going to build it from the ground up and we're going to make sure that we can actually sustain this and if we can't we can upgrade it as time moves on so things don't break as technology goes faster and i got to tell you that's the best thing that you can possibly do makes sense to me and then of course talks about upgrades easily blockchains and upgrades to stay relevant they used to we used to do what's called a hard fork which we still do now which still sucks that's why we got bitcoin cash that's why we got bitcoin sv and bitcoin tomato and whatever else but polka dot enables forkless upgrades allowing blockchains to evolve and adapt easily as better technology becomes available and believe me that is coming then to finish up here it says several teams are already building impactful solutions for polka dot for a range of apps uh, like finance gaming digital identity IoT, supply chain management, interesting. Social networking and cloud technology. Web3 Foundation, the organization responsible for stewarding the development of Polkadot, supports many of these teams with grants. Brilliant. We're going to give you a bunch of money. We want you to build a lot of things, and then you, you can go out in the world, sell all these different things, and it can also make Polkadot the most used blockchain out there. I got to tell you, it's looking good. So look, I was going to go into some more detail down here, but I'm just going to link in the description. And um, I got to tell you, Polkadot looks like a pretty great project. The thing is, I'm always I'm always very skeptical. You have to understand, um, if you've been here for some time, uh, anything around 2017, to me, you're an OG. Uh, 2016, 15, 11, doesn't matter. I mean, you saw that uh, unbelievable parabolic bull run. And the problem with that during that time is that you had so many projects coming out that were like, you know what, this is the next big thing. And then another one, this is the next big thing. And this is the next big thing. And before you know it, you were bloated with 40 different tokens that you have purchased that pretty much went down to nothing as time went on. So I'm a little jaded. You have to understand that's just how I am. And I'm a little bit more cautious because I've made the mistake. So um, before, when people would tell me, got to get a polka dot, got a polka dot, I'm like, it's just another shiny object. I will take a look at it when I have time. And I just had time. And now I got to tell you, looks pretty good. However, you have to understand something. When I say don't FOMO into it, I mean, let's take a look at polka dot. 635, let's take a look at the, the price over time. I'm not saying don't buy it. FOMO is not don't buy it. FOMO is don't go in there and, you know, somewhere around here, when it's 575, don't go in there and be like, you know what? Here's a $10,000. It's all my money. And then hopefully it goes up. And you know what happens? It goes down. And it goes up a little bit and it goes down. And it goes down. Here you are, you know, what are you, 5, 513? So you get this feeling in the pit of your stomach like, dang, I did the wrong thing. That's, that's not great. So all I'm saying is just do this dollar cost average in and you should be okay now am i going to miss these huge enormous gains yeah i am if i would have bought back here let's just 
call it. And I would have bought it at 522 and I put $10,000 in. Well, I'd have been up uh, pretty good, you know, 651. Not a bad week, right? However, what happens, and this has happened many a time in the past, is you buy it here and then it goes all the way down to the floor. You're like, what the heck happened? Oh, well, the partnerships were a lie, uh, different problems with the team, and this thing happened. So you're like, well, uh, geez. All I'm saying is just be careful. I've actually bought it right around here, 560, 540, somewhere around there is when I bought in. Did I miss these impressive gains at $2 or $3? Yeah, I did. And I'm okay with that. I am not here to make massive, huge amounts of money in a month and gamble everything away. I just, that's not my plan. That is my plan is to take it slow and slow and steady. Now, that is just my advice. If you can do whatever you want, that is just what I am doing. So lastly, let me say this. Where can you buy Polkadot? That is the big question. Well, you can get it on Kraken. The thing that sucks about Kraken is that you have to do wire transfers. There is no automated clearinghouse if you want to purchase with uh, dollars. You can uh, transfer over Ethereum. I think that's the only pair, Ethereum and US dollars. I think there's, some, there's one other thing, but you can transfer it over and buy it that way if you want to do it like that. If you want to fund it through your bank account, uh, you got to wait like two days if the wire goes through. So it's on Kraken. I believe it's on Binance. I'm not for sure. I don't have a Binance account. So when people say, why don't you mention Binance? Because I have a Binance account. I know I'm in the United States, but I live in Texas. It's not allowed in Texas. It is allowed in Florida now. So con congratulations to all the Floridians. Also, if you're looking for another place, uh, it's also offered on Voyager. That just happened two hours ago. So if you're looking for an alternative to any kind of uh, exchange that you have, there's going to be a link in the description. It's going to look like this. And there's all the different exchanges and wallets I've ever used. Everything from Gemini, Coinbase, uh, Abra, Kraken, Cash App, eToro, Crypto.com. And I just give you a breakdown of all the fees and uh, what the percentage rate that they're actually offering if you're uh, storing your crypto on there. There's affiliate links. You don't have to use them. You can go right to Voyager and download it. You can go right to Kraken and sign up if you don't have one. But uh, if you use my links, they give you between 10 and 25 as an affiliate link. So it's up to you. And one big thing about Voyager, just so everybody's clear, there are they offer about 42, well, I guess 43 different cryptos now, and only half you can take off the exchange right now. They're working to take all of the different cryptocurrencies off, but right now you can only take the big ones. And I'm pretty sure I haven't, I'm not 100, but you can when you buy Polkadot, it won't be available for immediate release. And that's the same thing with Cardano as well. Oh, and one more thing about uh, Polkadot, just uh, to be clear. I had done a video about seven, 10 days ago, and I, and I said I was going to pass on it because, again, I didn't have time. But um, looking into it and really researching it, I can say yes. So I can come back here and say, you know what? Uh, I'm not 100% correct every single time, but I will tell you what I know and what I don't know. And I'll tell you when I have changed my position due to facts and research. And uh, that's what I try to do every time. Am I going to be uh, right all the time? No. But try to get it as best as possible. All right. So thanks for sticking with me through the uh, entire video. Really appreciate it. If you don't know, there's a join now tab underneath. Uh, just uh, you don't get anything special. Just a buck ninety nine. It's kind of like a tip. But uh, I just do random shout outs. So I just want to say thanks to all the newbies, which would be uh, Tommy Maples. Tommy Maples. That's a good one. Jeremy Schwartz. Susan Miller. Who else we got? Eric Mitko. Bill Ennis. Johnny Bitcoin. Uh, Amuse Web Design and Igor Pustin and Chris DVM. So thanks everybody. I really appreciate that. If you like those types of videos that we just uh, went over, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Not sure. YouTube controls all that stuff. And uh, just check those out. Um, that is it for today. I wanna say thanks. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.